Skywatch Media News for June the 17th, 2020. An eruption at Yellowstone Supervolcano is an event that is feared by many people, not just in the United States, but across the world. The concerns that are centered around an overdue eruption are very real, because the effects of an eruption of this magnitude would have far-reaching implications. The question that arises in the minds of so many people on so many occasions is whether the fear of a cataclysmic eruption is over-exaggerated, or are their concerns justified based on recent seismic and geothermal events within the park. Back on June the 5th, the park was hit by a dozen smaller quakes within a 24-hour period. But Yellowstone has, for many years, been a seismically active zone. So the other question that arises whenever a seismic event occurs is whether these earthquakes can result in or have the potential to ignite a volcanic eruption. It certainly has become a hotly contested topic among scientists. If you ask geologists the big question about Yellowstone, they're liable to give you a mixed bag. They will tell you that, yes, sometimes an earthquake can cause an eruption. But in order for that to happen, there would have to be a number of factors in play. According to the USGS, a volcanic eruption can only be triggered by nearby earthquakes by means of tectonic plate movement, if in fact the volcano is poised to erupt. Normally, earthquakes of magnitude 6 or greater would be associated with a subsequent eruption or some type of unrest at a nearby volcano. Therefore, in order for a significant eruption or explosion to occur at Yellowstone, a couple of known factors must play out. First, uh, there would have to be enough eruptible magma within the volcanic system. And second, there would have to be a significant pressure within the magma storage region. Now, some scientists have suggested that it is not the size of the earthquakes that will determine if the volcano will erupt, but rather the quantity or frequency, which may explain why so many people are concerned about seismic activity in and around Yellowstone Park. If you're getting swarms occurring below an active volcano, then it is a safe bet that magma is moving up from underneath. As always, there will be some experts that will dispute whether this is a sign of an imminent eruption. Yellowstone can experience as many as 3,000 quakes or higher per year. On average, they have between 1,500 and 2,000. Since the year 1973, there have been 48,000 earthquakes registered in the region, many of which are lower magnitude. But even with that many quakes taking place within a relative time frame, it doesn't necessarily indicate that an imminent eruption will take place. USGS placed the eruption probability at 1 in 730,000 which is very low considering the number of earthquakes happening on a regular basis. Even though the low probability rate may seem comforting to some, experts are still preparing for the worst case scenario at Yellowstone, an event that has the potential to wipe out large swaths of the U.S. Yellowstone's last great eruption was referred to as the Lava Creek Eruption, in which the supervolcano covered 2,900 square miles with ash and fallout. A similar eruption today would severely disrupt agricultural industries and food networks. Volcanologists have also indicated that such an eruption would alter global weather patterns. Even the USGS has admitted that if a caldera-forming eruption occurred, its effects would be worldwide. When we hear statements like these from geologists and volcanologists alike, it is not surprising that so many people worry about the possibility of a super eruption in our lifetime. Statements similar to these that are posted on social media attest to the concerns 
that people have about Yellowstone's super volcano. So is it fair to say that Yellowstone Volcano is overdue for another mega eruption? Well, not according to the USGS. Although they acknowledge that another eruption would have worldwide implications due to ash cover fallout, they are not convinced that the supervolcano would have sustainable power to cause another super eruption in our lifetime. They claim there is not enough magma below the caldera to feed another eruption. According to their logic, volcanoes do not work in predictable ways, and eruptions do not follow predictable schedules. And therefore, the math does not agree with the consensus that the volcano is overdue for another eruption. In essence, what they are saying is that it is not the time to worry. So what exactly does the math tell us about Yellowstone and the time frame for the next big eruption? With respect to large eruptions, there were three events that occurred at intervals of 2.1, 1.3, and 0 0.640 million years ago. If you average out the years between the volcanic events, that equates to an average of 730,000 years between eruptions. Now, if the data is presumed to be accurate, that the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, then Yellowstone would be, based on the law of averages, in the range of 90,000 years before another major blast took place. If there is one flaw in calculating the law of averages with volcanoes, it would be that they do not follow schedules, and multiple eruptions like those that occurred at Yellowstone are not evenly spaced out over time. Because of its unpredictable timeline, considerations must be made regarding the likelihood of a significant eruption, since the last one took place nearly 640,000 years ago. Yellowstone is definitely edging towards another major event, but calculating a time period is virtually impossible, as it is with most volcanic and seismic events. The USGS has estimated the probability of another major Yellowstone eruption at 1 in 730,000, which also equates to the average years between eruptions according to their calculations. But what would happen if Yellowstone's supervolcano erupted again? Yellowstone, with its majestic mountains and panoramic views, would be erased from the North American continent. The sequence would begin with a swarm of increasingly intense earthquakes in the region adjacent to Yellowstone, which is a sign that magma is rushing towards the surface of the volcano. The pressure within the caldera located in the background of this simulation would build up to the point where the magma would burst through the surface of the earth in a tremendous eruption. Toxic elements would spread across the sky in quick order burying Yellowstone in lava within a 40-mile radius of the caldera. Yellowstone's plume of ash and volcanic gases would reach a height of 15 miles, where it would then begin to travel across much of North America. The ash would darken the sky and blanket the ground across three quarters of the United States. Ash accumulation would be up to three feet in the northern Rockies, and several inches over much of the Midwest. The effect on the nation's infrastructure, power grid, and water and food supplies could very well be devastating. Combine this with a worldwide volcanic winter as the ash cloud moves east, causing global average temperatures to plunge as much as 18 degrees over a decade. In this scenario, you would have a recipe for world famine. 
If the events as described here were to actually take place in the U.S., it would become the first continental scale disaster for the simple reason that no corner or area of the country would be exempt from the lasting effects of a supervolcano eruption. As you bear witness to the changes happening on this small planet, take time to look up to the sky, which is unending. It is like an old and dear friend that will always be there for you. Stay safe and thanks for watching.